Hello friends, in this short session, we'll be talking about some of the most important CT features of traumatic intracranial hemorrhages. First of all, intracranial hemorrhages are of two types, intraaxial bleeds which occur inside the brain parenchyma and extraaxial bleeds which occur outside the brain parenchyma. Let's first talk about the extraaxial bleeds. Extraaxial bleeds are further divided into three types, that is extradural, subdural and subarachnoid bleeds. Extradural bleeds are those bleeds in which bleeding occurs outside the outer layer of dura. In subdural bleeds, bleeding occurs inside the inner layer of dura and in subarachnoid bleeds, the bleeding occurs underneath the arachnoid, that is over the surface of the brain parenchyma. Let's first talk about the extradural bleeds. Look at this particular CT. What do you see here? In this CT, you can see that there is a very well demarcated extraaxial hyperdensity over the right parietal convexity. So, this is a classical appearance of extradural hematoma which takes the shape of a biconvex or a lemon. Now, some of the important salient features about EDH that you should remember. EDH occurs due to high impact trauma and it occurs due to the rupture of middle meningeal artery. The most important point you remember about EDH is it does not cross sutures. It may cross midline, but it does not cross sutures. Now, some of the important classical clinical features which are associated with EDH. One of them is the talk and die syndrome and the other is the lucid interval. Now, let's have a look at our second example. What do you see in this particular CT? In this CT, again, you can see an extra axial hyperdensity over the right parietal convexity, but there is a change in the shape. The shape is that of a crescent or a banana. So, if you find this crescentic or a banana shaped hyperdensity, which is extra axial in location over the cerebral convexity, this is an example of a subdural hemorrhage. Some of the important points about subdural hemorrhage. Subdural hemorrhage usually occurs in elderly patients, can occur even after trivial trauma and subdural hemorrhage most importantly can cross sutures but does not cross dural attachments. This is a very important point to differentiate subdural hematomas from extradural hematomas. Now, let's talk about the third type of bleed. This third type of a bleed in which you can see convex cell hyperdensity over the surface of the brain parenchyma insinuated or interdigitating between the gyri is called a subarachnoid bleed. The most common cause of subarachnoid bleed is trauma and the typical locations are over the fissures and it is also seen over the sulcal and the cisternal spaces. Now, let's talk about the intraaxial bleeds. Intraaxial bleeds are the ones which occur inside the brain parenchyma and so are associated with edema. In this case, what do you see? You can see there are multiple small bleeds in the frontal lobe which are associated with perifocal edema. So, this is a classical example of contusions and the most common side of contusions is frontal and the temporal lobes. Now, coming to the special case, in this special case, you can see multiple small, small bleeds which are located at the gray white matter junction interface. If I tell you that this patient is comatose, having a very poor GCS, what is your diagnosis going to be? Your diagnosis is going to be diffuse axonal injury. Now, some of the most important points about diffuse axonal injury. In diffuse axonal injuries, CT findings are minimal. Many a times, CT can be normal. So, investigation of choice in diffuse axonal injury is MRI and to be more specific, the sequence of MRI which is used is either a gradient sequence like T2 star or susceptibility weighted imaging. What are the sites at which bleeds occur in diffuse axonal injury? They are the gray white matter interfaces, the corpus callosum and the brainstem. And this is how the bleeds look like on a susceptibility weighted imaging in case of diffuse axonal injury. These small, small black foci represent nothing but foci of blooming or small micro bleeds which have occurred as a result of DAI. So, this is all about traumatic intracranial hemorrhages.